Let's get us a hymn book and turn to number 109. Number 109, begin our service. Let us stand. Let's sing it out now. Others all come ringing over the rest. Let the ways in the line, send the line. Are there souls to rest? There are souls to save. singing I'm his he's mine
Amen. Let's all stand together as the choir comes down. Teenagers, you can make your way up as they exit. And let's turn around and fellowship one another tonight. Good to see you in the Lord's house. Amen. Good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. Good to be here, and good to see you, and what a joy it is to be in God's house tonight. And I'm going to give you just a few announcements, and Brother Daniel, you can take off with the choir. And good to have the youth choir up here, and I thank the Lord, and I'm so thankful for an understanding church, a church who understands that uh, if we do not invest in the future of uh, Freedom Baptist Church and, and our nation, for that matter, uh, we will and have already lost several generations and will continue to uh, until we learn the importance and the value of our young people. And we can ignore them. We can act like they don't matter and don't count. But everybody's got a place in God's kingdom. And, uh, and I love all people, everybody. And we're not, you say, who's the target audience? Everybody. I don't like that target audience stuff. Because if you target somebody, you're going to leave somebody else out. If you're targeting 35 to 45, you just left a whole bunch of other people out. And uh, our goal is, is to reach everybody. And I'm thankful for our young people and thank God for them. Thank God for the Fredericks. Looking forward to, to Brother Fredericks preaching tonight. Saturday morning visitation, 10 a.m. And then don't forget Youth Revival now just around the corner, March 21, 22. And a Thursday and Friday night. And Brother Randy Dignan will be preaching. And uh, so you uh, be much in prayer for that meeting. And even if you're not involved with our youth. I, I want you to be here if you can. And it's not exclusively youth. It's, uh, uh, it's for every, amen. Here we go. It's for everybody. Amen. Uh, and uh, so you be here. It's a, it's a revival meeting of Freedom Baptist Church. And that's what I want you to know. And uh, so you're welcome to come. I want you to come. And uh, you'll enjoy the preaching. And uh, whether you enjoy it or endure it, it'll be from God's word. Amen. <laughs> And either way, I'd rather you enjoy it, but a little bit of both is probably, probably the truth of the matter. Amen. Because uh, when somebody's stepping on your toes, it's, it's hard to enjoy it at the time, but uh, soon after you can. And it's just good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. We're going to listen to the youth choir, and then after they finish, we'll take up an offering and uh, continue with our services. Thank you for being here tonight.
Enjoy that. Say amen. Amen. I appreciate our young people. And amen. I'd rather hear that one right there than any of this current stuff. I can tell you that. Amen. And uh, it's amen. Anyway, we'll get off of that. Good to see you tonight. Good to be here in the Lord's house. And uh, when our fellas come down, you can go ahead and come up and receive our offering. 
And on Sunday night, um, and I don't see them here tonight. Where they at? see them. Uh, good, they're not here. That's a blessing. <laughs> it's not a blessing. Uh, on Sunday night, we're going to, I want to take a special offering to help uh, Brian and Marcy get to Texas, and um, they're going to help out with the roll-off homes there, and uh, we want to want to do our part to help them, and uh, so you be much in prayer. Marcy's still dealing with the effects of the Lyme disease. It, it never really leaves your body, and so she's still battling with that and to pray for her and the family and uh, we want to do something for them Sunday night so come prepared to do that and that'll be a blessing I know and we'll just give it to them that night this will be their last service on Sunday night uh, with us and so you be much in prayer for them let's go Lord in prayer for this offering and ask God to bless it and use it Father we thank you uh, for your goodness your mercy I pray now you bless this offering use it for your honor and your glory and we'll thank you for what you do in Jesus name Amen Amen. Amen. I didn't know the whole crew was going to come out here. <laughs> Amen. That's good. I appreciate that. And uh, the boys didn't know what to do up here on in front of these microphones. It's different. Amen. But uh, good to see you in the Lord's house tonight. And uh, good to be here. Good to have Brother Frederick's going to preach for us tonight. I'm looking forward to it. And I tell you, I need to hear preaching. Amen. And I uh, listen to it in the radio and in the office, but it's, it's not, not the same live and in person. Amen. And uh, somebody said, you know, I, uh, somebody on the platform here said, uh, you know, I, I like to be able to go to the altar some. I said, yeah, I do too. And uh, amen. It just, uh, you know, if it, when God stirs your heart, it's good, to, it's good to do business right away, you know. And uh, boy, you wait, you get home, things start happening again at home, and, and you forget, forget really what you was doing there and, and what you heard, what God did for you. And it's good to come down and pray and get it settled and uh, thank the Lord for it. Had a good day today. Hope you did. And a wonderful day. And I tell you, I was rejoicing with somebody before church and, and about when God saved them and got home from Vietnam, they was telling me, and got saved when I got home. And, and uh, Brother Joe Myers led them to the Lord in their home and, and they tell me about it in 1970. And they're still excited about it. Can you imagine that? Amen. That's a good sign. They got saved. Amen. And I praise the Lord for that. Good to be here. And let's have a word of prayer. Then we'll have a special. And then we'll have Brother Frederick come and preach for us. Father, we thank you. Uh, for your goodness, your mercy, and what I do pray that you'll bless now. Uh, the remainder of the service, bless the song, use it. Uh, Lord, I pray that you fill us with that Holy Spirit. And God, help us to receive your word tonight. And 
I pray for Brother Fredericks to give him power from on high. And God, just help us again to receive your word and gladly and be obedient to it. And God, I just pray that you'll have preeminence in everything that's done. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Sorry about that. Um, 
Well, what a song, huh? What a message in the song. Yeah. Aren't you glad the king came down to talk to you and uh, came to where you were? Uh, when I could not go to where he was, he came to me. And uh, June 29th, 1990 was the day he found Clint Fredericks. Now, he'd been looking for him. He'd been calling him, but Clint was too stubborn, had too many things he wanted to do. And uh, I thank God for the fact that I'm saved, and I hope you'll rejoice with the same feelings there. Um, Hebrews chapter number 2, Hebrews chapter 2. Are we okay? Do I have my keys? We're all right? Okay, Hebrews chapter 2. It's good to see the Kigers here. They're probably, man, I don't have bigger fans. You're here every Wednesday I preach, and I appreciate that. And I'm sure it's just a coincidence that your grandkids are in the choir and singing too. But I'm just saying, thank you for being here all the time. And uh, uh, y'all pray. Friday, where's Tyler? I don't want to jinx it. Where are you at, Tyler Pardue? You in here? Over here? Hi, Tyler. Friday, they're playing at the Coliseum. Is that correct? And uh, in the uh, state tournament there. And so the 14 seed, it's Hoosiers 2013 style. And if you want to go out there and root them on, make sure you wear red. Is that correct? The Cardinals are red. And uh, cheer them on. And uh, Mrs. Pardue was joking. She goes, now, Brother Clint, I don't want to say don't come, but the two games you did come to were the two worst games that he's played. So um, <laughs> I'm not saying don't come, but, you know, so I appreciate that uh, welcoming spirit from the Pardues. And uh, so I'll just pray for you, uh, Tyler. Sorry about that. Can't make it. Uh, I'll try to sneak in the back, I think. Is, uh, is Miss Duggins here? Miss Chris? Chris and Bubba, are they back here anywhere? I got to tell this funny story. Uh, she's uh, one of the secretaries there at Old Town Elementary School. And, uh, um, oh, by the way, we brought, my wife had a ton of box tops. And we don't use them at our private school, I guess, right? But at the public school, or we do? Okay, well, sorry, Gospelite. But anyway, um, <laughs> so we had a ton left over. And so on, on a weekly basis, I do, I help with a mentor program. And there's a, a, a little second grade girl that we read every, every week for about 35 minutes to an hour, depending on the book and the activities. My wife thinks I enjoy going just to do the little activities at the end. And we had, to, we had to color together and do our dreams and this and that. And then she took it home and she said, man, my teacher says you color real good, brother. And so, so thanks. And, uh, and so we've done all these things. So I, I, we, we had these box tops laying around. So we took them and said, here, Michelle, take these and she goes oh. I said what she goes we're gonna win and get a pizza party well she says pizza but anyway she goes we're gonna win and get a pizza party now and uh, so man she was so excited well Miss Duggins is there so every time I pick up Michelle and we go to the cafeteria to read I go by the office area and I don't know I'm not too shy but I just say hi to everybody so I always stick my head in the office area Miss Chris I'm like hey how y'all doing good to see you hey Miss Chris good to see you and boom just keep going that's it been doing that for a few months now, and I guess my wife got this story. One of the secretaries told Miss Chris, she goes, who's that young boy that keeps coming in flirting with you? And uh, Miss Chris was quick right away to say, hey, hey, that's my youth pastor at my church. That, that, no, no, no. And so uh, uh, just, whoo, it was a mess, but uh, I was an embarrasser in here. So anyway, if you see her, just tell her that story. It was funny. Uh, Hebrews chapter number two, we'll quickly get into this. And again, continue to pray, please, for the youth revival. Brother Randy Dignan and I have been talking often. Uh, he pastors a church there in Jefferson City, Missouri. His parents are deaf, and they have a very effective deaf ministry for that area as a result of it. And so uh, he is a signer, and sometimes when he preaches, he signs also. But because of that testimony, and he'll go and do deaf camps and deaf retreats also, and preach that way. Um, there's a few folks coming that uh, are deaf, and they emailed him and said, we're going to be there. And so, so if you know how to sign, or let me say this, if you know someone that can interpret and sign like that, I'm going to call a few churches who might be coming, see if they have one also. Now, he can preach and sign at the same time, but he did say this, sometimes my hands have to catch up to my mouth because I start preaching too fast. But uh, what a blessing. And uh, so let's make sure if those who can't hear are going to be here, let's make sure that those of us who can hear uh, be here in attendance also. And so we look forward to a great night. Saw Brother Steve Cox Monday night, and he's excited about being here with us. He thanks the church for the prayers. They went home this morning. They've been in the hospital now for six days doing some blood work on their little daughter, Colby. And uh, everything seems well now. They got out of the NICU and went home this morning. So their first night at home will be tonight for the Cox family and their new baby. So he wanted me to remind you that he's grateful for the prayers that Freedom Baptist Church has offered for them. Hebrews chapter number 2, and uh, the first word of verse number 1 is therefore, and to understand in context why we're looking at this, we have to kind of back up a little bit to see why the verses we're about to read are therefore, but 
<clears throat> to, to save time, basically, the priesthood of the believers, the book of Hebrews theme, and, and uh, what we have access to. But chapter 1 has basically been talking about the fact that Jesus is better than the angels. And, Je and, and though the word have come from the angels in the past, the word that comes from Christ, who is our high priest, and uh, through what he did on Calvary, um, it's much better. And so, therefore, because Christ is better than the angels, as explained beforehand in chapter 1, he says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. I mean, he's again reiterating, just saying, if, if we would be steadfast to listen carefully when the angels pass, <clears throat> excuse me, pass the message down, how much more should we pay close attention when Jesus Christ speaks to us and gives us the message? You following me there? So, with that being said, he says, we ought to give the more earnest heed that we have heard less than any time. We, all this time he's mentioning us, us. We all have to listen. We all have to pay close attention. And I simply want to say this. Yes, we can neglect so great a salvation, but you know, there's more to being a Christian than just getting saved. And that's the main thing you have to do first and foremost. But after a person becomes a Christian, there's what's called growth. There's what's strengthening the relationship. And, uh, uh, you know, those of us who are married here today will say, yeah, when we got married the first week, the first month, the first few months was awesome and awesome. But, you know, the, now we're coming up on 18, honey. And as we spend more years, we're nowhere close to what others have over 50 and so forth and those creeping up higher. Uh, but you know what I'm finding out? As awesome as I thought the first week, the first month, the first few months were, is how much awesome year 18 is and year 17 was and year 16 is. The longer, I don't want to take away from the song, but the longer I serve him, the sweeter it grows. The longer I've been married, the sweeter it grows. And I want to say this, that we as Christians can enjoy a wonderful Christian life if, if we'll listen, if we will take heed. I mean, how can we neglect not just so great a salvation, but in verse 1 it says, the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Most marriage problems happen because Ralph, the man in the marriage, always has this statement, oh, I forgot. And then there's that age-old argument where no one wins. I told you it was over. No, you didn't tell me. Yes, I did tell you. No, you didn't tell me. Yes, I did tell me. That's our way of saying we forgot. We weren't listening. Now, we try our best to listen. You know, it's tough that sometimes uh, the wife wants to have those intimate conversations when there's one minute and seven seconds left in the basketball game, and she wants my undivided attention <clears throat> at that time. Uh, but the problem is sometimes we, we just don't listen. If I had a dollar, I mentioned this in our parent team meeting we had uh, last month, and I said, <clears throat> if I had a dollar for every time we got phone calls regarding an activity or some sort of event for the teenagers from either a teenager or sometimes a parent, and I'll say, well, during the announcements on Wednesday night, I remember going through all that. Oh. And so sometimes we just don't listen. That's why a preacher makes a big deal. That's why I make a big deal when we kind of, you know, a preacher will kind of scan the crowd and then to make that one individual or that group or that area of the auditorium not feel too embarrassed, and I'm just going to make it up. But we'll just say it's this, this couple right over here. Boy, they keep playing footsies. They're messing around. They're a distraction. All these people are going, I can't believe they're doing that. Good night. All of a sudden, the, the person up here sees it. They'll kind of turn this one and say, hey, hey, let's pay attention. Hey, let's all focus. Let's all look up here. Come on, we're in the house of God. Let's get something from God, from the Word of God. He's doing that because he doesn't want verse 1 to happen. He doesn't want them to slip. These are important things. Every time we open the word of God and say, thus saith Lord, that's why he says, put your iPods up, put your iPads away, put your phones away. Put, let's give a time to listen right now. I hope and pray all of us spend time with the Lord and have a personal time, walk with the Lord. But if you don't, can I just remind you, this is the best you're going to get all week. 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I wish it was better. But, but if you don't spend time with the Lord, this is the best. You ain't going to get closer to God just listening to some song on the It's good. When the Word of God is preached and the Holy Spirit is working and the Holy Spirit inside of you hears the Word of God preached, it starts to go, yeah, 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 that's right. And then there's an opportunity there as a Christian to grow. But sometimes we don't because we just let it slip right by. And if it slips right by, then we as Christians wind up drifting. We just wind up getting further and further away from God. I mean, when he got saved, it was awesome, it was exciting, it was great. But then we just started drifting. We let it slip. We let it slip. We let it slip. Can I tell you, a forgetful hearer is in just as much trouble as those who cannot hear. A forgetful hearer is in just as much trouble, is in just as much hard harm as someone who will not hear. And so what can we hear tonight? Are you drifting? You know, the danger of drifting is there's some things we need to be re reminded of that drifting requires no effect, uh, no, no, no attempt by us. It just sometimes if you're not paying attention, you just wind up drifting. It requires no effort on our part. Um, I'm not going to talk about fishing because, to be honest, I ain't a fisher, and I'm not against it. I just I mean, I'm not. A I almost had an opportunity to go fishing this week, but I'm not a fisher, so I'm not going to try to relate to you that way. But I do this. Uh, growing up in Hawaii, we used to live on the beach, right? And I'm sorry, the coast, right? We're Christians, and uh, and uh, no, we'd go to the beach. And my uncle, you know, he'd get out there about sunrise, and he'd catch the big waves. And I wouldn't go surfing out there, but I'd ride, I'd go boogie boarding or something like that. My brothers and cousins, we'd go body surfing, and we enjoyed that. And I remember my aunt would always say, "Now, Clint, remember what lifeguard station we're by, and don't ever forget, because you know." And I was like, "Yeah, whatever." And I remember at this one particular beach down by their house where we go to. I think lifeguard uh, station number six was kind of where we always camped and went. And I remember specifically it's number six now because there were times where we go in and you know the waves crash and start to go a certain way. And especially if you surf, you have to know that because you'll ride it that way and then you'll come back in the other way so you're not to get in their ways. But, but I remember when those waves would crash. My brother and I, we were fearless Remember when you were kids, I, mean, I promise, we were like Luke White. It was just like, have fun, and if anything happens, we'll tell mom while on the way to the hospital. You know, It was just, let me, it just looks fun, let's do it. Waimea Bay in Hawaii, it's an awesome part where the waves crash in and people jump off the cliff. Well, you have to jump off the cliff when the wave crashes in, or when it gets sucked out, there's not, it's not deep enough for you to survive. And, you know, some people show up a little inebriated, and they just go, woo, and jump. But we were like, okay, wait for the water. We're like, oh, we just jump. You didn't think about safety, liability form. You just went. But I remember body surfing this one time over at uh, over that beach by Sandy's Beach where my aunt and uncle live. And we would go in, and man, it was about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And I'll never forget, we, we were just having a time. And man, we were getting crashed by the waves. We were breaking every rule. You're never supposed to turn your back on a wave. And then we were just, woo, yeah. And, you know, we were little tiny squirts, and just even four-foot waves would throw us over. You get the, the top of a four-foot wave, and it throws you down if you don't ride it right. And uh, we were just having a blast. Well, it had been about 30 minutes now, 40 minutes, and there was a new set of waves coming in, and these were big ones, and we were like, let's go for it. And so we jumped out there, and we got one, and it's hard because at Sandy's Beach, it's so shallow. You have to be careful. If you don't ride it right, you'll get thrown into the sand. It's, 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 that's why the waves are so big because it's just not real deep, and so when it curls over, it hits you. Anyway, all right, here we go. So this one white-haired fella then came across a platform, and what he did... <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I got distracted. <clears throat> And so this one wave comes in, and my brother keeps going, you probably shouldn't, that one's a little big, you probably shouldn't go for it. You should. I said, I'm going for it. Man, I jumped in that thing. And uh, before I could turn and start to get my shoulder in to really get into the inside of that tube and start to ride it, I got sucked underneath, and it just put me on top. And next thing I knew, I was on top of this wave, and I was looking at the sand. And the next thing I remember was my brother grabbing my ankles. I know it sounds weird, but... The, the wave took me and plunked me right into the sand head first. I was up to my shoulders. I mean, it was just, just like that. And I was up there, and my feet, my brother said, were just kicking up in the air like that. And I wasn't trying to breathe. I wasn't drowning. I was just a, I mean, I had sand in every nostril, every ear hole, every, I was just, it was a mist. The next thing I knew, I remember my brother grabbing my ankles, and God just gave him this strength. And he went, boom, and just pulled me out. And right before the next wave started coming, I'm just, blah, 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 trying to go through. We look up, 
And we're trying to find where my aunt is, where my uncle is, so we can go complain and, you know, this happened. And, and man, we were at, like, lifeguard station number 16. We had no idea. You see, drifting requires no effort. We were just out there having fun, just going through everything, going through that. Next thing you know, we looked up. We were 10 lifeguard stations away from my aunt and uncle. Uh, and I, my brother's trying to rinse my face off with more salt water, you idiot. And, he's a, <laughs> and so we're going back, going back. But you know what? Drifting requires no effort. Drifting is an unconscious process. And you never drift against the tide. You always go with the tide. Now, don't get ahead of me as I lay the foundation here for us as Christians as we drift. It's dangerous to others and it always ends. It always ends in some sort of destruction. Now, I didn't land on my head because we were at station number 13. But we wound up at station 13 because I got so caught up in all this process. Now, if we're not careful, we as Christians may start to drift. But the crazy thing, it's an unconscious process. You really don't realize it. But the question we, po pro we propose to you tonight is, do you love God as much tonight as you have ever before in your life? Do you, do you like go to your prayer time and go, God, I just hope this gets through the roof and you hear this. Don't you realize God wants to hear you pray? God wants to talk to you? God wants to have a relationship with you? Have you drifted? Youth pastor, have we drifted? What are some common signs of drifting? How will we know if we're drifting if it's an unconscious effort? Well, we can, make, we can have a checkup from the neck up, amen? And uh, maybe just get outside of ourselves and look and kind of look at some of these things and say, how do those apply to my life, Okay. So are you drifting? Here's a common sign. Number one, a diminishing desire to have a quiet time with the Lord. A diminishing desire to have a quiet time with the Lord. Uh, First Peter chapter, uh, I'm sorry, Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 through 3 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We heard this at our, at our Wild Meat Men's Fellowship. This passage of Scripture was preached on. If you will delight in the law of the Lord, if you will enjoy having a desire to spend time with God, he says, man, if you think it's good to be a tree that is planted, but not just planted, but planted by the rivers of water so it has sustenance and it can go through the roots and strength. It's not a tree planted in the desert. It's not a tree planted on top of a rocky mountain. It's a tree planted by the rivers of water. If you will delight in the law of the Lord, God says, I will make you, I will make you like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Do you realize the bonus of having a walk with God? It's a common sign of drifting if you have a diminishing desire to have quiet time. We ought to spend time in the Bible, but we also should spend time in prayer. Mark chapter 1, verse 35 says this of Jesus, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. Mark 6, 46 says, And when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, Men ought always to pray and not to faint. The disciples never asked Jesus to teach them how to preach. The disciples never asked Jesus to explain exactly what this meaning is. But they did say, Lord, teach us to pray. A, a diminishing desire to say, if your spiritual growth is dependent on Sunday morning or a Sunday night or a Wednesday night service and that's all you get, you're missing out. You're probably drifting. A diminishing desire to have quiet time. Another sign, I believe, of drifting is a diminishing desire to be with God's people. Now look, I know all of our personalities are different, but this is Freedom Baptist Church. All right? And I know that some people sit in one section of the auditorium and not in another section of the auditorium for whatever. That's fine, but this is church. And I get a little leery of said Christian who always shows up 12 seconds before the, before the service starts 
and sneaks out during every head bowed, every eye closed, or in Jesus' name, amen, and boom, the car's already started. It's already halfway down the road, and we haven't even got to the back door to say goodbye to people. I just get a little bit leery. Not, 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 I'm not freaking out. I'm not, oh, my goodness. But I just get a little bit of leery when there's a diminishing desire to be with God's people. Psalm 122.1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. And can I say, if you've been a member of Freedom Baptist Church, ladies, and you've never attended the ladies' conference, hey, that might be a sign of we're starting to drift. If you've never been to any of these Tuesday night meetings that the ladies have, there might be a sign, well, I just got so much. I understand that we're all busy. We all got things to do. But I'm just saying, Christians want to be around other Christians. Oh, we had a wild meat men fellowship? Well, when, when did they put that on the calendar? The last two years? Oh, you guys are splitting wood and all hanging out up at Brother King's? When, when did they announce that? Maybe a common sign of slipping. He who will not hear is just as much in trouble as he who cannot hear. Now, listen, isn't it amazing? Now, again, preacher always gets, oh, I'm stepping on toe. I'm not trying to step, I'm just trying to say stuff that's true, we'll show up at a lake at sunrise, put our boat out there, and we'll see other guys with boats out there, and we'll shoot the breeze. Hey, man, hey, you catch anything? No, 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 okay, yeah, good, good. And we don't even know them, but we have a commonality. We're all fishing. I want to go this year, Bowman Gray, right? I know I got to put on my full whole armor of God and be ready to go out there. I realize that, but, but I want to go. And I, but I guarantee you, if Jeff Tuttle took me to Bowman Gray and we sat out there, be, hey, Jeff, hey, hey, how you doing? Hey, hey, and there'll be a guy, woo, hey, big Jeff, what's up, Tuttle, how you doing? He's like, a preacher, don't, don't, don't mind him. And that's fine, but, but there's a commonality, okay? They both like Budweiser. And I'm just saying, I mean, uh, I mean now they both like racing. That's what, racing, that's right, I'm sorry. Um, they, they both like, there's a commonality. I, I, I haven't been there, but I'm assuming, Justin, if the first race, I'm, I don't know, 6 o'clock, what time's the first race? 7 o'clock? 8? Eight? 8 o'clock. Oh, so right after happy hour. Okay. So um, 8 o'clock is first race. I doubt, I doubt people are showing up at 7.59 in 53 seconds. I'm pretty sure they're there early with their cooler, if they're allowed to, or no, this is just water, I promise. <laughs> they're showing up early, and they're getting there, and there's... I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. A diminishing desire to be with God's people. Now, I'm not saying you have to have sleepovers and go camping and do all. I'm just saying, hey, church is at 11. We got a wonderful Sunday school hour, though, too. And can I say to you couples, you got Jimmy Smith as a Sunday school teacher, Forrest Ritchie and Clint Fredericks. Okay, two out of three ain't bad, but I'm just saying, you got three awesome opportunities to meet people. Get here at 9.45, refreshments. Hey, how, are you, how long have you been? Oh, start to get to know people. Instead of just, well, you know, I just don't know anybody. A man that hath friends, Scripture, must show himself friendly. There's a great time to meet them whether in our Sunday school hour. I'd like to invite many of you, if you don't come, to enjoy the fellowship, to enjoy the teaching of the Word of God. And now it's another opportunity, though, that you don't let it slip. A diminishing desire to have quiet time, a diminishing desire to be with God's people, a diminishing desire to share the gospel. I think that's a sign that you're letting things slip. You know what one of the saddest phrases you can hear from a Christian is? I used to. Oh, man, I remember when I used to. Oh, Brother Roy, you don't want me to sing, man. I used to sing, but I just can't. And I understand there's some health issues, and sometimes we can't. I, but, man, don't you wish you could? Don't you wish you could just get the gospel out to people? Don't you remember? Well, we've been going, we're going through the, uh, the, the 12 disciples in my class now. And it's amazing that for everyone, there's a Peter and just as much scripture is written about Peter and his, and his excitement and his brashness and his highs and his lows, as much about the apostle Peter as there is about Paul. And then right after him, you got a guy like Andrew, three verses dedicated to Andrew. But you know what Andrew was good at? Andrew didn't stick his foot in his mouth. Andrew wasn't up preaching. Andrew said this, hey, you got to come meet this guy, Jesus. 
He says, hey, we got a problem. You got, you got a little lunch there? Hey, come here. You need to come to Jesus. Come here. Come here. That's what Andrew did. He wasn't a preacher. He just brought people to Jesus. Oh, hey, you got a qu- Hey, hey, come and see a man who told me every, well, so ever things I've done. You got to meet this guy, Jesus. He wasn't the preacher. He said, but hey, you got to come here. Hey, would to God. Hey, oh, I can't wax eloquent. I don't know what to say. Just say this. Hey, you ever been to Freedom Baptist Church? You ought to come. It's awesome. Hey, you ever been to free? You ought to come. It's all, just come and see. Come and see. You don't need to give them a breakdown of doctrinal uh, dissertation of, well, you know, the virgin birth is a conceivable. Blah, blah, blah. And Peter really wasn't the first pope. Isn't it? As we're voting in a new pope. Don't, 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 just say, hey, you ought to come to freedom, man. If you miss out, it's your fault. But hey, you ought to come to freedom. Just, just bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. A diminishing desire to share the gospel is a common sign of drifting. But if it's not a diminishing desire to have quiet time or a diminishing desire to be with God's people or a diminishing desire to share the gospel, an increasing thrill over the things of the world is also a common sign that you're drifting. An increasing thrill over the things of the world. We know the verse, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see, if you love the world, it's hard to say, no, I do love you, God. Hey, hey, Ralph, husband, if you were to say, well, well, I like, I love this lady and I love anyone else, but, but, but Gazelda, you are my wife and I love you too. No, 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 no. You, you can't do that in your marriage. And God says that our relationship between him and the church is much like that of a husband and wife. And if we're going to be totally sold out and dedicated to our wives' husbands and to our husbands' wives, then why can't we as Christians be also dedicated to God? An increasing thrill over the things of the world is a common sign of drifting. Well, if that's a problem, what's the solution? There's got to be a way to help. Okay, preacher, you told me where I'm at. Now what? Okay, yeah, all right. You know, X marks the spot. You got me. Now what? Is, you know, we, preacher said this the other day. You know, it's, it's bad news like this that makes good news good news. And before we can get to where we need to get at, we need to know where we're at now. And if any of these are signs of yours, let me just say this. How then can you make sure you don't drift? Can I just say this? Number one, keep swimming. <laughs> keep swimming. My brother and I now, boy, we're up at the beach and we're taking the waves in. Every time we get up, we look around. Where's the lifeguard station? All right. Well, we got to get back over here. Got to get back to number six. Got to stay. All right. We'll ride another set in. We'll ride. We'll, we'll wind up over here. Where, 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 where are we at? Where, we're six. Where, oh, there's six. Okay, come on. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. That sounds like Dory, doesn't it? Okay, just keep swimming and keep working and keep working. It's going to take work. Hey, hey, salvation is no work of mine, right? Salvation is done. Religion says do, but salvation is done. It was done on Calvary, and all I have to do is trust Christ to go to heaven. But hey, if I want to grow as a Christian, if I want to make sure I don't drift, I'm going to have to put some work into it. I'm going to have to do my part. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says, For which cause we faint not, but through, though our inward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day, day by day, day by day. I got to wake up in the morning and spend time with the Lord and say, Lead me by the Spirit so I don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. I've got to do my part. But isn't God a God of love? Oh, yeah, that's why he sent his son Jesus down the cross. Isn't he a God of mercy? Yes. And anybody who asks for that mercy will receive it. We've gotten the gospel frustrated. Do I frustrate the gospel for your sakes? I feel in 2013 too many churches are frustrated. They say, well, come as you are, and, you know, God loves you, and God doesn't care. And God, Oh, no, no, no. God says, hey, if you come as you are, if you want to go away different, you're going to have to do this. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. But then after to get saved, he says, come out from among them and be ye separate. He says, be ye holy, even as I am holy. Hey, I want to remind you, it's not just, hey, whatever. Hey, God says, hey, you're going to have to do your part. And I say to you this morning, if you want to make sure you're not drifting, you're going to have to get up tomorrow, and you're going to have to start swimming. You're going to have to do your part day by day, day by day, day by day. Yes. Philippians 3, 12 <laughs> 
And 13, 14, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth. Well, God just loves everybody, and God, oh, no, no, God will save anybody. God, but if you want to become a better Christian, you want to make sure you don't slip, you're going to have to reach forward to those things which are before. And like the scripture says, he says, man, I have got to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But it takes some work. It takes some work. Keep on rowing. Watch out for undercurrents. Boy, you got to watch out for those at the beach, man. If you're not careful, oh, it's just a little wave. Okay, it gets me. If you're not careful, you get sucked under there, and you'll try to swim out, and the next thing you know, you're swimming towards the bottom. (laughs) You're like, what happened, man? I just got turned around. I just got, man, what in the world? Can I tell you, there's going to be undercurrents in our spiritual lives. There's going to be times where things just take you. Why am I in the hospital again visiting another person? I can't explain it. But those are undercurrents. They're almost, ten, they're almost times in which we can grow and become stronger. But watch out for undercurrents. 1 Peter 2.11. The Bible said, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. There's going to be some folks going against you. There's going to be some folks talking against you. Galatians 5, 16 and 17 and 18. It simply says, This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. He says there's going to be undercurrents. It's your flesh. It's your flesh. It's your flesh. Don't give in to the flesh. Expect to go against the tide. I need to tie my shoe here. Expect to go against the tide. You ever wind up being in the wrong way where the whole crowd was going? You ever been to a ball game where there's thousands of people and you're like, okay, we need to go down the stairs, everybody, and then turn left because that's where the door is where our car is, and you get down there and everyone's going right. And you're like, all right, everyone, just follow me. Here we go. You ready? And you just kind of, you kind of, excuse me, excuse me, and you kind of make a line. You're just going, and everyone's going this way. Everyone's going this way. Can I just be honest with you? Sometimes that's how the Christian life is. Sometimes you feel like you're Elijah and you're all by yourself. But you're not because God's with you. And God says, hey, if you'll just keep going that way, you ain't going to drift. I'll keep you pushing. I'll keep going. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Can I tell you, I think it was uh, J. Frank Norris who said, if you woke up this morning and didn't meet the devil head on, it just means you're going in the same direction. Once again, I faced Satan this morning, and I battled him all the day long. But in my weakness, God gave reassurance. <laughs> Hey, the sun's coming up in the morning, but you've got to keep on swimming. You've got to watch for those undercurrents. You've got to expect to go against the tide. And lastly, have a strong anchor. Have a strong anchor. That's what God is for you. You get a hold of God, you ain't going to drift. Throw that anchor down, and you just hold on tight and let him grow you. Colossians 2, 6 says, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up in him. Established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Oh, make sure you have an anchor. Make sure you have an anchor. Though the angry surges roll on my tempest-driven soul, I am peaceful, for I know wildly through the winds may blow. I have an anchor safe and sure that can never more endure, and it holds, my anchor holds. Blow your wildest then or gale on my bark so small and frail. By his grace I shall not fail, for my anchor holds, my anchor holds. Get a hold of the anchor and you won't drift. Hebrews 6, 18 and 19, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. 
which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Are you drifting tonight? Diminishing desire to have quiet time, diminishing desire to be with God's people, diminishing desire to share the gospel, an increasing thrill over the things of the world. Can I tell you tonight? Keep on swimming. Watch out for undercurrents. Expect to go against the tide and get a strong anchor. Get a strong anchor. The conclusion of my quiet time, I'll always say something like this. And Lord, help me to walk the path that you would walk and help the people you would help if you were here in my shoes today. I yield my body to my soul, my soul to my spirit, and my spirit to your Holy Spirit to lead God and direct me. Let's make sure we get that anchor every morning and take them with you so we don't drift. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this truth in Hebrews reminding us that, yes, salvation is paid for. Salvation is taken care of. But, Lord, I wonder if after salvation you tell us to do a few things. Oh, there are not rules and regulations that we need to make sure we stay and keep going to heaven. There are rules and regulations that help us to live that life, that abundant life in John 10.10. And so if there's anyone in here tonight who, first of all, does not know for certain they're on their way to heaven, I'm preaching to you tonight saying, won't you trust Christ as your personal Savior? No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you don't know Christ, I want to encourage you to come forward this evening and trust Christ as your Savior. We'll have someone pray with you and show you some verses from the Bible to where you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. Or maybe we mentioned something tonight that you have diminishing, a desire to have quiet time, a desire to be with God's people, a desire to share the gospel. Or maybe you have an increasing thrill of the world. Can I tell you, if, if that's you tonight, you're drifting. Don't drift. Don't drift. In just a second, I'm going to pray. When I'm done praying, we'll stand to our feet. Once we stand to our feet, Miss Carla's going to start to play. We're going to open up what we call the invitation. I'm inviting anybody in here tonight, if you just want to come forward and kneel and talk to God and tell him of some things you want to get victory over tonight, maybe change some of those desires, or maybe it's to make sure we hold on to that anchor. We just say, man, I'm going to keep swimming no matter what. I don't know what it is, but... When that invitation's open, I'm going to invite you to come and do business with God. Father in heaven, I do pray, Lord, the Holy Spirit of God, that if there's anybody here who knows not for certain where they'd spend eternity, God, we're not asking them to come forward and join them. We're saying we don't want you to die and go to a place called hell because of the sin we have in our life. That's destined for all of us. We were born that way. The only way we can get rid of that is by giving it to you, Jesus. And then there's probably some in here who we're saved, but, man, we're just struggling. To be honest, we're probably drifting. And if we're drifting tonight, may it be the night we say, tonight's the night I stop drifting. I'm going to get a hold of that anchor. I'm going to do all I can to become the best Christian I could possibly be. However it works, God, Holy Spirit, please work upon the lives and the hearts of the people here in this building that we be better Christians for thee. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's stand to our feet. Miss Carla's going to play something. And at this time, the invitation's open. If you want someone to pray for you, come on forward and just make eye contact with me. We'll have someone pray for you. But are you drifting? Are you drifting tonight? If so, hey, Christian, let's get back in line. Let's get back where God wants us. Are you drifting? Oh, be careful, Christian, to make sure we're steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord so that we know that our labor's not in vain. Let's be sure not to drift. Are you drifting? Oh, make sure we're not drifting. Oh, we got to keep swimming. We got to do our part. We got to put forth that work day by day, day by day, day by day. Oh, man, there's going to be undercurrents. There's going to be obstacles. But we got to make sure we keep on going. Are you drifting? We have an anchor safe and sure. That anchor is Christ Jesus. Utilize him. God spoken to you. Come on tonight. Don't wait. You come on while she plays. Would you come? Where are you at tonight? Where are you at? Can you look back over the last three years, two years, year? Say, Pastor, I'm going forward. I'm going forward. Or would you have to look back over that past period of time and say, you know, I'm going backward. 
Why don't you come tonight and get it right? Ask God to help you. Would you come while she plays? Come on. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. And God, I do pray you'll help us get a hold of it. Lord, from our devotional life to our time of witnessing, God, help us, I pray. To be a soldier of the cross, to be advancing forward. God, may you help us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We'll have a time of prayer requests. Thank you, Brother Fredericks. I have several things to be much in prayer for. Pray for Rosa Johnson's brother, uh, Howard Serber. Pray for him, if you would. The hospital with uh, heart conditions. We'll continue to pray for him. Uh, Miss Betty Cox is doing better. She had a spell on Sunday. Uh, she sits right here on the third row back, I believe. Miss Marie, yeah, third row back. And she's doing, doing much better and hadn't had any symptoms like she had Sunday. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. And I thank the Lord for that. And then there's a lady, Tanya Pacola. Uh, her kids ride our buses and uh, just precious family. And she is in serious condition, critical condition. Uh, it doesn't look good, really. And uh, I was there to see her last night with both Todd. And uh, just not good. Unless God does a miracle, uh, she uh, has no brain activity. She had been unconscious for some 20 minutes. And because of some heart-created seizures, uh, so pray for her if you would. Pray, pray for a miracle. And uh, pray with the family in the room. They said, Preacher, we believe God can do it. And I said, yeah, I do too. I do too. And let's pray. Let's pray for them, for her. Her husband's name is David. David and Tanya Pacola. So remember them if you would. Lift them up in prayer. Uh, continue to remember those recovering from, from cancer. Uh, think of Robin Simmons and uh, also Patty Palmer who sits um, Bob and Kay sit right here. It's their daughter. Pray for pray for her if you would. And then, of course, Drew's mom. Anyone else special request over here? Pray for Kay Kaiser's dad as well. Yes, sir. Brother Milton. Okay. She's having a time with bronchitis, and she didn't look, didn't look well Sunday. So she was here Sunday morning. And uh, pray for her. Lift her up in prayer if you would. Anyone else on my left here? Anyone? All right. In the middle section here, anyone? Yes, ma'am, Mr. Rosler. Okay. All right. Pray for her. Would. Anyone else here? Yes, ma'am. Miss Cicely? Myra Frick? Okay. I had it. Uh, pray, for, pray for Michelle's sister, if you would. Uh, in her early 50s, uh, heart conditions weren't going to require a pacemaker. And uh, pray for her. She's in good health otherwise. Really a shock. So pray for her, if you would. Anyone else in the middle here? Yes, sir. Yes. Pray for Sandeep. He has a wonderful spirit, seems like, and hadn't had a chance to talk to him, but uh, when I'm preaching, he's right in there, you know, and, and uh, praise the Lord for that. Pray for him. When does he do back? Uh, Saturday. Okay, pray for Sandeep, if you will. Do up in prayer. Yes, sir, Brother David.
Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. All right. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Right here. Pray for Vernon Brown and lost the loved one. Continue to pray for Jack Reed's family, if you would, and the loss of his brother. Yes, ma'am. Okay, pray for the one that had seizures today. Yes, ma'am, Miss Martha. Okay. Okay, pray for Randall's mom on the way to the emergency room for Cy. Baptist? Okay, okay. Anyone else over here? Yes, sir. Brother Roy? How do you spell that last name, Brother Roy? F E R N? Vernon, okay. John Vernon? Okay. Charter member here? Years ago, okay. Remember John Vernon, if you would? Anyone else? Am I right? Yes, sir. Brother Jimmy. Can you pray for Brother Jimmy's mother? And pray for Brother Jimmy. And I tell you, uh, I can't imagine how taxing it is. Um, but you know, I appreciate a I appreciate a son taking care of his mama, uh, and you know, it's talking about how how uh, difficult. I know there's a commercial on one of the local Christian radio stations, and uh, talking about how you know, get up at five, feed him breakfast, get up at seven, do this, get up at five, do this. Get. I'm thinking, yeah, well, what they do when you, you was a baby. Let's replay that one. <laughs> get up at 2, get up at 5, get up at 7, get up at 10, get up at 12, get up at 2. Amen. I get mad every time I hear that commercial because it just it seems backwards to me. It's not a burden to take care of your parents. It shouldn't be. I understand, I understand how things are, and sometimes you've got to do certain things. But, uh, well, anyway. Y'all get upset at things like that sometimes. You just don't get up and tell everybody about it. Amen. Yes, sir. David, okay. Pray for Larry's brother, David, if you would. Anyone else here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Pray for, pray for strength on that. Okay. Okay. All right. Pray for Miss Martha, and that they'll be auctioning off her mom's place. And very difficult, I'm sure. Can't imagine. So pray for her if you would. Can you remember Miss Peggy Duggins, if you will? T.J. Heath as well. This is Marilyn Venable's nephew in ICU. Got to see him yesterday as well. Anyone else over here? Anyone? All right, let's stand together and we'll pray. And uh, thank you for being here. And the Lord's good. And I hope you have a good rest of the week. Let's remember these requests and ask God to bless each one of them. Brother Jeff, Heath, can you lead us in prayer, please?